Hello guys, welcome to Metten. In this video, we are going to discuss about the anatomy of the inguinal hernias. We are going to look into the what are the different types of inguinal hernias, direct and indirect, and what is the difference between the inguinal hernias. So please make sure to watch till the end to get the most of it. So coming to inguinal hernias, inguinal hernia is nothing but as a protrusion of the abdominal viscera into the inguinal canal. So what happens? The abdominal viscera it may be a loop of intestine or anything protrudes protrudes into the inguinal canal when the abdominal viscera protrudes into the inguinal canal we know have we know it as a inguinal hernia clinically it presents as a pear shaped swelling above or medial to the pubic tubercle so above the inguinal ligament it presents as a pear shaped swelling basically there are two types of inguinal hernias direct and the indirect first we will discuss about the indirect inguinal hernia we are discussing about the indirect inguinal hernia so what do you have in the ing indirect inguinal hernia the indirect inguinal hernias occur if the hernial sac enters into the inguinal canal through the deep inguinal ring so it enters into the inguinal canal through the deep inguinal ring so the indirect hernias are nothing but when the abdominal viscera or the hernial sac <coughs> enters into the deep enters into the deep inguinal ring to the inguinal canal lateral to the inferior epigastric artery so the indirect inguinal hernia can be of two types it can be uh, incomplete or complete it is more common in children and young adults children and young adults it is more common and then the predisposing factor for this type of hernia is complete or partial patency of the processes vaginalis so the patency of the processes vaginalis is the predisposing factor to cause the indirect inguinal hernia so these are more common in the children and the young adults the indirect inguinal hernias are common than the direct inguinal hernias and occur more often in the males than females so they occur more in the males and females and they are also uh, more common than the direct inguinal hernia so basically there are two types one is the congenital indirect uh, inguinal hernia and then we have the acquired indirect inguinal hernia so two types it may be congenital or it can be acquired so congenital is due to it mainly occurs due to the patency of the processes vaginalis it may be due to outpouching of the peritoneum connected to the peritoneal cavity so that is about the congenital coming to the acquired it occurs due to increased abdominal pressure increased abdominal pressure it may be due to weight lifting or something so when the intra abdominal pressure is increased immensely the abdominal contents are pushed through the deep inguinal ring into the inguinal canal so uh, first of all inguinal hernias we have we have two types indirect and the direct In the indirect we have another two types congenital or acquired so this is about the indirect inguinal hernia coming to direct inguinal hernia direct inguinal hernia so the direct inguinal hernia occurs if the hernial sac enters the inguinal canal not through the deep inguinal ring but by pushing the posterior wall of the inguinal canal where the inguinal canal and what is the posterior part of the inguinal canal i just uh, uh, if you are not watched the our video of the inguinal canal please make sure to watch it the posterior wall of the inguinal canal is formed by the fascia transversalis and the conjoint tendon so if the hernial sac protrudes to the uh, posterior wall of the inguinal canal it leads to direct inguinal hernia so what happens it uh, enters through the inguinal canal medial to the inferior epigastric artery and all through the hesselbeck strangle we have also discussed about the inguinal triangle in another video make sure to watch it so what happens uh, comes through the posterior wall of the inguinal canal and the neck of the hernial sac is wide neck of the sac is wide so the direct inguinal hernias are more common in elderly more common in elderly due to weak abdominal muscles weak abdominal muscles so the direct hernia leaves the triangle through its lateral part or medial part 
so therefore it in direct also we have two types one is the lateral direct and another one is medial direct inguinal hernia so i am going to draw the hernias to show you first thing we have is the what are the coverings of the inguinal hernias if i just told you this is the inguinal canal and then we have the muscle fibers arching this is the skin so the hernial sac or the loop of intestine this is the hernial sac or the loop of intestine enters like this so this is the inguinal canal it enters like this this is the herniated sac this is the indirect inguinal hernia when it comes to direct inguinal hernia it is entering through the deep inguinal ring right so it is the indirect inguinal hernia coming to direct inguinal hernia the inguinal ring has a patency but then just medial to it like this we have the lower arched fibers and then we have the skin so hernial sac is entering here this is the hernial sac it is not entering into the deep inguinal ring or the inguinal canal but the posterior part of the inguinal canal it is entering here so up, uh, depending upon where it is entering it can be medial direct hernia or the lateral direct hernia compared to the inferior epigastric artery so this is about the indirect and the direct inguinal hernia now let's discuss about the differences between the indirect and direct inguinal hernia it may it may be a major question in the university exams so please uh, let's listen into it so coming to the differences between the inguinal hernias this is the indirect and then we have the direct inguinal hernia let's look at the differences one by one firstly coming to the site of the hernial sac what is the site in the indirect inguinal hernia it enters through the deep inguinal ring deep inguinal ring whereas in the direct inguinal hernia it goes through the posterior wall so coming to the differences between the indirect and the direct inguinal hernia coming to the site the site of the indirect inguinal hernia is in, is through the deep inguinal ring and for the direct inguinal hernia it is through the posterior wall of the inguinal canal so what is the shape shape indirect inguinal hernia it is pear shaped pear shaped whereas in the direct inguinal hernia it is globular what is the extent of the hernias and where is it reaching it is generally scrotal it goes through the scrotum and for the direct inguinal hernia it is rarely scrotal it is not scrotal so what is about the uh, neck of the hernial sac neck of the hernial sac in the indirect inguinal hernia lies narrow and lateral to the inferior epigastric vessels lateral to the inferior epigastric artery and this one lies medial to it medial to inferior epigastric so what is about the reducibility can we reduce it or not it is sometimes irreducible sometimes irreducible whereas the direct inguinal hernia is always reducible you can reduce it always always reducible coming to the age group where it is affected age group it occurs in the young age whereas it occurs in the old age in the direct inguinal hernia so this is about the uh, differences between the inguinal hernias if you watch the video till the end make sure to subscribe and hit the like button and share it to your other friends please watch our other entire videos to get uh, the concept very clear thank you thank you so much